Hello, everyone, and welcome to Teaching in Room 9. The reason shapes are everywhere we look. But we have a job. Now, go ahead and touch your throat right here and see how they feel. And say to ourselves, to be positive. Lemurs are found on the island of Madagascar. For one, and the numbers get bigger as we go across to the right. Reset, that means taking a deep breath. It may mean counting to 10. Today, we're going to start with a freestyle throat. So I'm going to put my up. All righty, are you ready to learn? Let's go! Hello and welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, the region's largest classroom. I am Dr. Sanders and welcome to our new classroom where you can go anywhere and be anything. In this ever-changing space, we will engage and learn about the community around us. But remember what I always say, it doesn't matter if you're two or 102, we will have some fun, F-U-N, fun. We will have some fun while learning. I work at Adams Elementary and the St. Louis Public Schools, and let's get this day started. We are gonna start by giving some shout out to some of my friends. First, Hans, I like to say hi, Hans, how are you? Let's spell Hans, capital H-A-N-S. Hi, Hans. Lorenzo, hey, Lorenzo, how's it going today? Let's spell Lorenzo, capital L-A-W-R-E-N-Z-O-E. -E. Hey, Mr. Lorenzo. Hi, Zyla. Let's spell Zyla, capital Z-Y-L-A. Hey, Zyla. And Miguel, hi Miguel. Let's spell Miguel, capital M-I-G-U-E-L. Hey Miguel, all righty, let's do some learning. This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test. This is only a test. Like at home, it's important that we think of safety first. This is clearly not the way. You can't run and swing your arms in the middle of the hallway. It might hurt you and others around you. Remember, swinging your arms and running can be risky for everyone. To stay safe, walk with your hands by your side and take slow steps. Great job! Let's keep everyone safe together. Time for a quick review. Remember, swinging your arms and running can be risky for everyone. To stay safe, one, walk with your hands by your sides. Two, take slow steps with your feet on the ground. Great job. Let's keep everyone safe together. Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room 9. I'm Mrs. Ford from the Rockwood School District. I'm so excited to see your faces as you join in today and listen to A Good Neighbor, a book written by Dr. L.A. Smith. Let's go ahead and thank the author for writing this amazing book before we get a chance to hear it. Thank you, Dr. Smith. As I'm reading the book today, I want you to be thinking about something. I want you to be thinking about characters. Can you say characters? Characters. Characters can be people, animals, or even things like a scarecrow or a snowman. Characters are who the story is about. So when I'm reading this story, A Good Neighbor, I want you to be paying attention to the characters. And hopefully we'll have some time to talk about those characters when I'm finished reading. Are you ready to hear? A Good Neighbor by Dr. L.A. Smith. I have lived on my street my whole life. Eight years is a long time to live in the same place. I know everyone who lives on my street. 
Everyone here is so nice. We all know it is important to be a good neighbor. Do you have neighbors? Me too. At first, I was afraid to get to know the people on my street. Many of them looked different than me. I also thought they did strange things that were so different from my family. My parents told me, you have to be kind to everyone else in the world for the world to be a better place. Also, at school, we were learning about respect. Mrs. Smith told us, when you have respect, you treat people kindly, even if they are a little different. Mrs. Smith also said, sometimes people who are different may even live on our same streets, but we still have to be fair and treat people how we want them to treat us. That's why I'm a good neighbor. A good neighbor introduces his neighbors to others. You can see they're all meeting each other. They're neighbors because they live next to each other. When I first met Mr. Patrick, he gave me a green clover. Do you know what a clover is? Yeah, it's something that grows in the ground. And you can pick it and hopefully find one with four leaves on it. That'll bring you good luck. Mr. Patrick gave me a green clover and told me it would bring me the luck of the Irish. My parents told me Mr. Patrick is from Ireland. He told me he is Catholic. He says soon he and other Catholics will have to honor Holy Week. When I make a wish with my clover, it will be for something nice for Mr. Patrick. A good neighbor does nice things for other people. My dad's new boss, Mr. Lee Chen, lives right down our block. He invited our family for dinner. I thought he just moved because he didn't have much furniture in his house. He told me he was from Japan and his family sits on the floor for all their meals. Can you see that in the picture? They're sitting on these round pillows. Do you think the table is tall or short to be able to do that? Yeah, it's got to be pretty short to be able to sit at a table on the floor. I liked sitting on the floor. Mom didn't have to fuss at me one time to sit up straight in my seat. He taught us how to use little eating straws called chopsticks. I made a mess, but he only laughed. He said I would get better next time. I took my chopsticks home. I'm going to practice eating with them again. Mr. Chen will be impressed. A good neighbor tries out new foods. Have you tried any foods with your neighbors? My mom took me to the neighbor next door. She was getting something strange done to her hair. Mom called them braids. My mom's friend, she said she learned to do this style in her homeland of Cape Town, South Africa. Then, her son played some African music on his drums. He says he'll teach me how to play, too. That will be cool. A good neighbor learns new things from others. You can see them playing the drums, and she's getting the braids in her hair. Our male person is Brother Ahmed. My dad says he's Muslim. When he comes over for dinner, Mom makes sure there's no pork in his food. My mom always looks forward to one of the bean pies Brother Ahmed's wife makes. I think it tastes good, too. My dad reads a newspaper Brother Ahmed gives him. When I get older, maybe I'll read it, too. A good neighbor reads about other people. My babysitter, Varsha, moved here from Hawaii. She let me taste many fruits I have never tried, like mango, papaya, and guava. She also taught me that you could tell a story with your body through a dance called the hula. See her doing the hula? You can try it out right now too. If you stand up, move your arms. Look at you, you're hula dancing. I am making up a story now using the dance moves she taught me. I will surprise her with what I can do. A good neighbor takes time to try a new activity. He has amazing neighbors, doesn't he? 
During the winter time, I often get bored. The Berkshire family invited me over to play a game. Miss B Berkshire was lighting a set of candles she called the menorah, and Mr. Berkshire read from a book they called the Torah. We had hot cocoa and played a game with a dreidel. It was such a blast, and I won a pocket full of pennies. I plan to use the money to buy something nice. A good neighbor likes to play new games. My neighbor next door bought my family over for some fresh fish. Mr. McGee said you have to eat lots of fish during Lent. This holiday is celebrated for 40 days leading up to the Easter celebration. I worked hard to help clean and cook the fish. It was really tasty. Mother said we would have more fish soon. Mrs. McGee brought us another batch. I can get used to this Lent tradition. A good neighbor accepts the things others have to share. Jorge lives in our neighborhood and is from Mexico City, Mexico. He makes sure everyone plants and their grass will grow tall and green. Whenever I am playing outside, he will show me all the different kinds of plants and flowers. One time I named all the plants he showed me from my memory. Jorge was proud. He bought me a jar of spicy sauce he made called salsa. He told me to try some on my chips. I like chips and salsa too. It sounds like a lot of you have had chips and salsa before. It's delicious. It was delicious. A good neighbor remembers what other people teach them. For my eighth birthday, my parents invited all our neighbors to come over for ice cream and cake. Mr. Patrick came with ginger ale. Mr. Chen brought another pair of chopsticks. These were made of plastic and had some colorful Japanese writing on them. Others brought their drums and played beautiful beats. Brother Ahmed and his wife brought another pie. It was tastier than ever. Varsha did a dance and I showed her the dance I made. The Berkshires gave me my own dreidel and a canister full of pennies. I can share this game with others now. The McGee family brought some more yummy baked fish while Jorge brought his spicy salsa dip. I ate so many chips my tummy hurt. It was the best birthday ever. I enjoyed sharing it with all my neighbors. A good neighbor knows how to enjoy and appreciate everyone. I know they will like me. A good neighbor likes their neighbors too. I bet you are a good neighbor, just like the boy in this book. As I was reading, did you notice the characters? Were they people, animals, or things? Who was the story about? That's right, people. As you read, make sure you pay attention to the characters. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope to see you next time. Bye, everyone. Hello, boys and girls. Did you like the book, A Good Neighbor? Yes, I thought it was a good book as well. What was your favorite part? OK. Yes, I have a question. Are you a good neighbor? You better be a good neighbor. All right, hmm, now I don't want you to put your thinking caps on. What were the name of some of the characters in the story? You know, the people or the animals? Oh, yes. Oh, all righty. Man, you named all of the characters. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Hi everyone, and welcome back to Room 9. My name is Miss St. Louis, and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District. And we are located in South St. Louis County. Today, I'm here to teach a movement lesson that's geared towards children of all ages. So, let's get ready to dive into this lesson with a swimming test. So today to start, we're gonna begin by warming up our bodies. Let's stand in our V sit with our legs wide out. I'm gonna stretch up tall and reach down to one side and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Stretch back up and reach to the other side. 
One, two, three, four, five. And we can stand up nice and tall. We're going to move and stretch our head, shaking our head yes and no and maybe so. And now that we feel warmed up, let's dive on in. We're going to start by warming up our arms for each of our strokes. Today we're going to start with freestyle stroke. So I'm going to put my arms up and I'm going to bring them around in a circle each side. We're going to do 10 in total. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now that we finished that one, let's go backwards. We're going to move our arms in the same direction, but going the opposite way. So I'm going to bring my hand back and around. Let's do 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. The next stroke we're going to do is a specialty stroke. It's called the breast stroke. I'm going to put my hands in front of my face, push them up tall, and bring them around, almost like an upside down heart. Are you ready? We're going to do five. And one, two, three, four, and five. The next one we're going to do is called the butterfly. For this specialty stroke, we put our arms up tall, push them back, and bring them all the way around. Let's do five of those. You ready? One, two, three, four, five. Now that we've got our arms ready and in place, let's bring it down to the floor to practice our legs. All right, our next kick is going to be our breaststroke kick. So for this one, we're gonna start laying on our back. We're going to lift our knees up to our chest, bring them out wide and close them together. We're gonna to do this five times. Are you ready? Bring them up, out, together. And again, this is two and three and four, last one, and five. All right, let's sit up. Now that we've finished practicing our swimming strokes, let's take some deep breaths. We're gonna breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. And we're ready. Boys and girls, you did an excellent job today practicing your swimming skills. Remember, the goal is 60 minutes of exercise every single day. You don't even need a pool to practice your swimming. So make sure you get in those 60 minutes, make sure you drink your water, and we'll see you back here in room nine. Bye everyone. One, two. Three, four, five, Hi friends, welcome back to Teaching in Room Nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia, I'm a first grade teacher at the Soulard School, and here for Teaching in Room Nine, this is our song time. Songs are a fun way for us to practice counting and numbers. Our first song, we're going to be counting from one to 10. Counting up from ones is fun. One then two is doubled one. Three then four, let's add some more. Five and six, we're full of tricks. Seven, eight, then nine and 10. Let's start all over again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and that's the end. Great job, friends. We practiced counting from one all the way up to ten, and you did a lovely job. Thank you so much. Kiss your brains. I'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome back to our favorite classroom. It looks so amazing. Now it's time for our favorite wildlife expert. Yes, that's right, Mr. Bear Hands Moran. Hey, 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 Dr. Sanders. How are you doing Man, today? I am doing great. I am doing great. And oh. today we have Elijah, a ringtail lemur. Oh, I like Elijah looks hungry. Is Elijah hungry? Eli Elijah always wants a few snacks. Always like wants a few. Uh -huh. he, he's never lacking in the snack department. But, you know, ringtail lemurs are found on the island of Madagascar. Ooh, where, where is Madagascar? It is way off on the other side of Africa continent. Oh, okay. One of the seven continents. So this, this is a red-tailed lemur. Um, ringtail. Ring 
Not ring tail. tail. It's ring tail. That's why right. is it? Why is it called a ring tail lemur? Well, because he has thirteen of these wonderfully black ring tails. It looks more like a zebra tail to me. Oh no! Don't tell him that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry. Ze ze zebras are on the main continent. Oh, okay. Okay, he's on the island. He's okay. on the island. Okay. Yeah. So um, they are a primate. Ring tail lemurs are a primate, so he's closely related to all monkeys. They do have opposable thumbs both on their hands and on their feet. That's like us, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody do this. Yep, <laughs> excellent climbers. However, the ring-tail lemur is very terrestrial. Like, they like to run around on the ground. Oh, so they don't, so all the monkeys or lemurs, primates don't climb in trees? Not all of them. Okay. You know, uh, Madagascar being separated from the main continent so many eons ago, everything developed a little bit differently on the continent. The ringtail lemurs are one species of lemur. There's over 47 species, and they fill every ecological niche on the island. There's a mouse lemur all the way up to a cat lemur. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Okay. He's so cute. Mm. He's so cute. You know, and can I pet him? Yeah, you can pet him right here on the back like okay. that. Okay. But my question is. Can we have these as pets? You asked me, can we have these as pets? So the answer is yes. Should we have these as pets? The answer is no. Okay, why not? Well, even though he seems really cute and he's pretty soft and he's a beautiful animal, they require a lot of husbandry. And we humans have busy lives and we just can't give them the emotional and psychological support that they need to be healthy. Okay, you said husbandry. Is that like wifeidry? Not exactly, so but it's just the care of, you know, taking care of an animal. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, they require a lot of physical touch, and they require a lot of presence. In other words, they want you to be home all the time. They need you to be in their life constantly. Okay, okay. That's like uh, my kids at school. You know, sometimes they just want you to be there all the time, but you have other students to take care of. Yeah, yeah. He, he looks like he's just eating, eating away. He's oh. having a great old, grand old time. Hey, I'll and what's what. it? What is he eating right now? So he's eating mostly raisins out of there, but you see, there's a little M and M there now and then. Mm -hmm. and so he likes that sweet. Ooh. Yeah. Man, him can be buddies. Mm -hmm. In the wild, though, they eat a lot of sticks and leaves and things that fall off trees. What do they get from sticks? Uh, it's the fiber content, but you know on Madagascar and some of the areas that the ringtail lemur inhabits, it becomes very arid in the summertime, and there's just not a lot of nutrition around. They will literally eat anything. Now, if they catch a small lizard or a bug, they'll eat that too. Oh, okay. So they're omnivores. 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 Yeah. What omnivores? Yes, that means eat they eat everything. everything. They okay. Ooh, I learned that yeah. from you. They're, they're, they're not specialists when it comes to their diet. They'll eat just about anything they, they can find. Okay, what do they get? Do they, what about water in their diet? So ringtail lemurs do drink what we consider standing water or free water, but they also get a lot of the water from the foods that they eat. Okay. So they, if they come across a stream, they will drink from it, but they can go days without drinking. Not like us. We need some water all the at, time. At, at least every three days. Is it possible that I can hold Mr. You know, um, he is a little temperamental, and he has a mouthful of very sharp teeth like a possum. Yes. And so I would prefer just petting him. That, and I can, mm -hmm. you, you think can he'll share him. some M&Ms with me? No, he would definitely bite you, you try to get his food. <laughs> All right, I won't do that. Well, everybody say, hi, bye, Mr. Lemur. Bye-bye. All right. Wave and, bye, Elijah. And as we had another amazing animal, on our, in our classroom, and I'll see you in a bit. Great day, this is Candace with Chaos, and I wanna introduce you to my friend, Jen. Jen is short for Jennifer, and here's Jen right here. Jen is absolutely amazing. Jen speaks three languages, and Jen knows how to ice skate, and Jen also knows how to build amazing things with Legos. Jen wants to be an architect when they grow up. And so, something about Jen is Jen is sad a lot. And nobody really knows that that's what's happening with Jen. 
and Jen often has tummy aches, and Jen often falls asleep in class. And Jen sometimes gets into trouble because Jen doesn't turn in their work like they're supposed to. And so Jen really wants people to be patient with them. Can you say patient? Patient stands for pause and think. Inhale, exhale, now talk, or now tap out. And so sometimes Jen deals with bullying. And so when Jen deals with bullying, Jen is learning how to talk if they can, but tap out if they need to. And so we only talk when we can be respectful and not hurt anybody, including ourselves. But when we can't do that, we tap out and we find something else to do. And sometimes Jen has to tap out and walk away, or Jen has to tap out and talk to a trusted adult. If you're ever feeling really sad, or if you are ever feeling like you don't feel good, or you're feeling like people are bullying you, please talk to a trusted adult and use the patient skill. Talk if you can, or tap out if you need to. I want you to try that, let an adult know how it works out, and then I'll see you soon. You have an amazing day. Air hugs and cyber kisses. Hello, I hope you had a fun day of learning, but now it is time for us to be done. But before we get done, let's spell our favorite word. Nine, N-I-N-E, nine. Thank you for being in room nine, bye-bye. Teaching in Room 9 is supported in part by Know who to reach out to when you need help. There is hope. Call or text 988.